A group of mercenaries are hired by a white dude to complete missions no task force with ethics would ever accept. The film serves as an origin story for the iconic warriors. The most iconic character is the main character, who other than the Pittsburgh Steelers, when you think of yellow and black, this is the first character that comes to mind. The main character's world is turned upside down when cold-blooded murderers allegedly kill the only person the hero has ever cared about. I say allegedly because the hero later discovers that it was a fake death staged by the bad guys, but whatever. The main character is still pissed. The hero is placed in the hospital after the epic beatdown. When the unconscious main character gains consciousness, he or she takes out their frustration on everyone at the hospital. Unlike DiGiorno, revenge is a dish best served cold. Anyone who had anything to do with the secret missions by the mercenary group at the beginning is hunted down. The assassins are hard to find now and live below the radar. One of them lives in the boondocks in the trailer. The black one moves out west to keep a low profile, but that doesn't work. The only one that doesn't hide is the Asian one, arguably the most lethal of the assassins. The hunters will become the hunted because the main character tracks all of them down. You don't take a knife to a gunfight unless you got a real, real sharp knife. For weaponry, the hero receives the strongest, sharpest metal found on earth. The hero needs a place to lay low and think to get a plan together. An old Christian man gives the main character a place to eat, sleep, and think at the 50 minute mark in the movie. When the hero is well rested, he or she takes a bike ride to the main event. The first name crossed off the hit list is the Asian assassin. After that, the main character drives west to the black guy. They reminisce on old times and the black guy gets killed with a stab to the chest shortly after. I'd probably think this movie was racist, but it's totally not because pretty much everyone dies. Only reason they let the one with the eye problem live is because they needed a storyline for future sequels. Anyways, during the last battle, the hero's agility is put on full display as the main character walks a tightrope in order to survive. The two owners of the world's strongest, sharpest medals battle head to head. The bad guy is the main character's former death squad teammate, and the battle is literally a stab in the back. It looks like the good guy might die, but eh, guess again. The bad guy's head gets chopped off, and it's extra gross because even after the body part hits the ground, the nerves in the head are still kicking. Since multiple characters are still alive, it's pretty obvious, but the director makes it more obvious that a sequel's on its way by dropping hints that part two is right around the corner. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps>